So back to the future. You need to, in each of these communities, in order to have a successful business district, and in order to have many other things, but we're focusing today on, on successful business districts, you need to reinstall adjacent density, and by adjacent I mean near the business district. It needs to be of the right type and in the right place. Westwood talks about having a lot of multifamily housing, and there are many in that community who feel that that multifamily housing has had a very negative effect there. And they are right that they have a lot of it. I will leave the negative effect un undiscussed today, but they are certainly right they have a lot of it. But it's not near their business district. Their business district is surrounded by lovely uh, single-family homes. So in terms of walkability, they don't have enough density there. Um, you need to do clustering to create positive interdependence. Shop owners need to be next to other shop owners. It is very important to program your street front correctly. I spoke the other day to Ludlow, to, the, to some folks from Clifton, Ludlow Avenue. Ludlow Avenue has a lot of retail, and I'm not picking on any particular use in that business district, and I understand that landlords need tenants, so if somebody comes through the door and wants to rent a retail space, a landlord is pretty excited about that, but they've got a chiropractor in a key block, which takes about 40 linear feet of visibility out of their retail district. And you wouldn't think 40 feet's a lot, but retail districts succeed by always having something interesting to be walking past and walking toward. You have to keep me walking. And a chiropractor with a painted out window, who may be a great guy providing a great service, but it slows the momentum of that retail district. So you have to program your retail district carefully and you have to program it for people who are walking. And in other parts of this charrette, you're gonna hear about slowing traffic, which is essential. Rick Hall's here and he does a great job of talking about how to, to uh, create a better traffic pattern in your neighborhood. In Westwood, I know, we're talking about some design elements that would slow traffic down. We've talked to Madisonville about this. Walnut Hills just went back to two-way streets because one-way streets kill business districts. But I'm not going to dwell on traffic here. I'm going to just say that um, you, have, you are really targeting people who are on foot. They got out of their cars. They walked from their homes, whatever. They, by the time they are useful to you, they're on foot. Um, pedestrian momentum is key. You've got to have on-street parking. It serves two purposes. Sure, it's parking spots, but it, almost more important than that, it's teaser parking. It says to people, there's something going on here that's worth parking for. Um, and again, using Westwood. Westwood has on-street parking right now. They don't have anything for people to go to. So it doesn't really help to have on-street parking if you don't have a viable business district. But if you don't have on-street parking, it will hurt the viability of your business district. And by the way, I'm not a big fan of AMPM restrictions because not no so much seven to nine unless you're a coffee purveyor, but four to six is when a lot of businesses do a lot of business. People going home who might run in and grab a bottle of wine, uh, a head of lettuce, might, might just have time to stop for the, the shirt that they've been meaning to buy or run into the drugstore. Four to six is a killer time to have no parking and again, Rick Hall did a study in one of our neighborhoods. I think over two miles, he, he um, created a barrier uh, to, the, uh, to the curbside lane to see how much it slowed traffic to reduce the road to just one lane in each direction. And I think he found that over that two mile length, he increased travel time by 30 seconds. Don't sacrifice your business district for 30 seconds of somebody's travel time. Um, now, Ed, also, Ed Starkey also yesterday um, used a term that I thought was brilliant. He said, he talked about the 100% corner, which my retail real estate colleagues often refer to as Main and Main. Every neighborhood has a corner of Main and Main or a 100% corner. And that's your strongest opportunity site. And in College Hill, your strongest opportunity site is Hamilton and North Bend where at the moment you have two vacant corners and 10 vacant acres. Not ideal, but man, 
what can we do with those 10 acres? What can we do there to reinstall some density right in the business district? We got 200 more housing units there. The coffee company would, would expand yet again. Um, in uh, Madisonville, it's probably Madison and Wetzel. In um, uh, Westwood, and I'm going to forget this, which is really shameful since I grew up right there, but it's right where the Madcap Com Theater Puppet Company is going on Harrison. Um, in Walnut Hills, it's clearly Gilbert and McMillan. Those are your main and main, your 100% corners, and that's what you build out for. But point to point is very important. You don't do something here, and then because you've got an opportunity that you can avail yourself of right now, you do something a block away, and then you do something a half a block in this direction. You've got to create density in a fixed location and radiate out from that. When we started in Over the Rhine, we started at 12th and 9, and we fixed the block between 12th and 13th. And let me tell you, the rest of the neighborhood still looked like the wrath of God. But we, we fixed one block, and then we fixed the next one, and then we fixed the next one. And that is the way you have to do it. Because, again, in Over the Run, talented, hardworking people had been doing scattered sites for years, but they had never gotten to a level of sufficient critical mass that they could actually drive revitalization. Critical mass, density is critical mass. Density of businesses, density of people, that's what drives success. You've got to focus on critical mass. Can you tell that I'm the eldest of eight children? I mean, man, I'm bossy. Um, I went the wrong way. 